talking about uh, the traditional Chinese meridians and, um, and how they describe um, the anatomy of the body uh, in a holistic sense or how they give us a mapping system for understanding that holistic anatomy. In the lab here, again, we're always dissecting and breaking this down, but remember that the Chinese system is describing this whole thing and these meridians become a mapping system. In our video before this, we talked about how the meridians were organized into yin and yang pairs um, and that how there was the yang backside, yin inside, yin medial, yang lateral. And we mentioned to you that how those meridians tell us a little bit about the function in the yin and yang and how yin and yang compare to each other. Um, really, in the described it in a movement sense, um, as the arm moves in, the yin meridians are pulling in. That has an effect on the yang meridians. Yang meridians pulling out. Uh, if you think of that about uh, from a uh, Western anatomy concept, uh, really, what is that yin? That is agonist and antagonist pairing of the muscles. You know, biceps being an agonist for flexion, triceps being the antagonist for flexion, uh, again, vice versa for extension. But um, so that uh, concept of yin and yang uh, helps us to understand, you know, ideas such as agonist and antagonist concepts and that kind of thing. What I'd like to take a moment uh, in this video is just talk to you a little bit about the naming. Um, I started to in that video, in, in the previous video, talk about the. Um, uh, yin or the uh, lung and large intestine, for example, and a lot of times people get caught up in um, you know hearing well, lung or large intestine on the arm. How does that pertain to my lung or large intestine inside of my body? And uh, if there's problems in the meridian, does that mean there's problems inside? And how does that correlate? Uh, well, again, because Chinese medicine is so holistic in terms of keeping everything sort of understanding that it's all interactive and that you can't have a muscle in your arm without a long or large intestine and everything else inside and that they all interact with each other, um, we also can sort of separate ourselves a little bit from that and understand it a little bit closer. When we mention long or large intestine or we use that as a terminology, for um, describing or for, for really for naming one meridian or the other. What that is, is it's a way for us to again keep our, our uh, body organized. Um, what this starts to get us into is this concept that we call the five elements in Chinese medicine. Um, uh, really again, uh, uh, yin and yang being that same idea. Yin and yang is an idea to understand the world. Uh, we start when we first started to try to understand the world. Uh, we first understood it as a well. There's always two sides of the coin. There's a day and a night, and a light and a dark, and and that kind of thing. And so um, that gave us that yin side and that yang side. And certainly, it gives us two things to compare. Then I can compare day to night, um, days, warm nights, cold, you know, so on and so forth. And that helps me to understand it. We then apply that to the body. There's a yin and a yang, and then I can compare them. Well, what's the difference between the anterior and the posterior, uh, the inside and the outside? And that gives me two categorical columns for which to then start to make sense of how the body functions. The five elements are another way in which to do that. Yin and yang become a simple way to do that, but it's, it's limited in, in that it's only a duality. It only tells us, it only gives us two columns from which to compare. And when we start to look at the body, we're like, well, yeah, there's two columns. There's an inside and outside. There's organs and there's muscles. But you know what? Within those organs, they're different. The lungs are different than the stomach. And the uh, uh, large intestine is different from uh, the heart, for example. And so yin and yang then was limited in that it, yes, we could describe uh, the yin of the heart versus the yang of the large intestine. Um, but we also needed to sort of get a better grip on the function of those as well. So the five elements then gave us five separate columns from which to compare the body, the world, our organs, and all of that. 
And so within those five columns then, we put the heart in one, the lungs in another, the large intestine, so on and so forth. Um, and, we, and we then can, then we get a, a five new columns. So then we can start look at them. What's the difference between lung and heart? What's the difference between large intestine and small intestine? And those columns then, can we can start to compare. All right, so with those five elements then, we use that same naming system to then transcribe that onto the meridian system. And we said, okay, there are five, there's actually six meridians, if we mentioned earlier, uh, six yin, six yang, um, but the, that uh, incorporates two concepts such as pericardium and heart. Uh, we'll talk about those if we talk about function later. Um, but well, within the five elements, we have all of the organs um, uh, are paired. We have the yin and yang pairs of our lung, large intestine within that five elements, but the five columns give us those five things to break it down. So then that gave us five naming systems to use when we're naming out the meridians. And so when we then talk about the lung meridian, for example, on the inside of the arm, we're really talking about the lung meridian and the things that are in there the muscles, the nerves, the blood vessels, the lymphatic vessels, the, the, uh, the tissues uh, that function within that lung line. Um, however, there are points along the lung meridian that do have an impact on the lung. Lung seven is a point that we oftentimes needle that has an internal impact on the lungs. How that works is something that we're still kind of wrapping our brain around. We're still trying to get an idea of, of why needling this part on the wrist has a direct impact to the lungs itself. We'll be looking at some of that stuff here in the lab as we're doing some of our dissections um, and trying to sort of bore out what are the anatomical uh, connections to that. But for now, we just want to get that um, the lung meridian is named that way because it's really a placekeeper. It's, it, it keeps us on that five elements and keeps us a way to sort of organize that. So don't get too wrapped up in lung or large intestine. Is there a problem with my large intestine? No, there's probably a problem with that uh, large intestine part of your arm. Um, so that's our little discussion for today. We'll talk more about that five elements and incorporating those ideas as we work through the videos uh, subsequently from here.